In today's video, I'm going to talk about amino acids and the different types of amino acid. Also, I'm going to touch upon the different structure levels of protein. So, all proteins are made up of amino acids. Amino acids are the monomers of polypeptides. So I'm quickly going to touch upon why amino acid is an amino acid. You have the amine group, this is NH2. Any organic substance that contains NH2 is technically speaking an amine, such as methylamine and methamphetamine. Next, we have a carboxylic acid. A carboxylic acid is any organic compound that contains a C to double O bond and a C to OH bond. This here is the basic structure of any amino acid. As you can see, you have the carboxylic acid group and then you have the amino group. You also have an R group. This R group is variable and can change. This is how you differentiate between amino acids. There are 20 main types of amino acid and each one will have a different R group but the same basic structure remains throughout. The simplest amino acid, glycine, the R group is simply a hydrogen atom. So, very quickly, what are essential amino acids? So as it goes, in animals you have 20 main amino acids. 8 to 10 of these are essential amino acids. This means that you must have these amino acids in your diet as we cannot produce these ourselves. Therefore we have to obtain these amino acids by eating others such as animals and plants. Now I'm going to talk about joining amino acids. The carboxylic acid group of one amino acid reacts with the amino group of another. This releases water as a product. This is known as a condensation reaction and the new peptide bond is formed. So here you have your peptide bond in your new dipeptide molecule. If you were to add H2O, the peptide bond would break and you'd once again have two amino acids. This is known as a hydrolysis reaction. What is the primary structure of a polypeptide? The primary structure is a specific sequence of amino acids that make up the polypeptide chain. And the secondary structure? So when you have your primary structure, basic sequence, and the backbone of the amino acids, they then coil, pleat and twist to make the secondary structure. In this diagram here, we have the basic structure of two amino acids joined together. They are coiling to make a helical shape. This is known as an alpha helix. The N's, the O's and the H atoms all form hydrogen bonds with each other. However, these are hydrogen bonds between the same polypeptide, just different amino acids down the line of the helical twist. This provides extra strength and structure. Now I'm going to quickly go over tertiary structure. Tertiary structure is essentially the final 3D shape of the protein. This diagram here shows how the coils and twists of the secondary structure once again coil and twist to form the tertiary structure, final 3D shape. Now I'm going to quickly talk about different types of bonds and attractions that keep the tertiary structure together and held in place. This here is a disulfide bridge. These disulfide bridges form between two different parts of the polypeptide chain. Different amino acids may contain sulfur so when these sulfur containing amino acids are close, disulfide bridges can form. Different R groups in the polypeptide chain will contain different atoms and different groups. Therefore ionic bonds can form. Some of these groups are delta negative, and some of these groups are delta positive. This is to do with the electronegativity of an atom and how it can attract electrons, but you don't need to worry about that. Once in close proximity, positive attracts negative, negative attracts positive. Next, I'm going to talk about hydrophilic and hydrophobic parts. Some R groups may be hydrophilic, water loving. Some R groups may be hydrophobic, water repelling. So here is the tertiary structure of a random protein. The hydrophobic amino acids have repelled the water and gone to the middle. So, as you can see, all these different bonds can form. You can have disulfide bridges, ionic bonds, and of course hydrogen bonds. Be sure to stay tuned and stay active on YouTube as this is only part one of my proteins videos. Believe it or not, these videos do take very very long to make and the camera takes up a huge amount of space on my hard drive, therefore I can only make one at a time. Thanks for watching and stay tuned, I'll be making more very very soon.